Hi there guys, it's Arunikas here. Today I'm going to be giving you a tour of my Digital Office Station 255. This is a rather rare piece of hardware which doesn't feature that often on YouTube. So I thought that it would be fitting to give it a full review. So what exactly is an Alpha CPU? Alpha, originally known as Alpha AXP, was a 64-bit RISC architecture developed by DEC, designed to replace the 32-bit VAX complex instruction set computer. Alpha was implemented in microprocessors originally developed and fabricated by DEC. These microprocessors were most prominently used in a variety of DEC workstations and servers, which eventually formed the basis for almost all of their mid to upper scale lineup. The Alpha architecture was sold along with most parts of DEC to Compaq in 1998. Compaq, already an Intel customer, decided to phase out Alpha in favour of the forthcoming Hewlett Packard Intel Itanium architecture and sold all Alpha intellectual property to Intel in 2001. This effectively killed the product. Hewlett Packard purchased Compaq later that same year continuing development of the existing product line until 2004 and selling alpha-based systems largely to the existing customer base until April 2007. The main contribution of alpha to the microprocessor industry and the main reason for its performance was not so much the architecture but rather its implementation. At that time, as it is now, the microchip industry was dominated by automated design and layout tools. The chip designers of digital continued pursuing sophisticated manual circuit design in order to deal with the overly complex fax architecture. The Alpha chip showed that manual circuit design applied to a simpler, cleaner architecture allowed for much higher operating frequency than those that were possible with more automated design systems. These chips caused a renaissance of custom circuit design within the microprocessor design community. So what is an Alpha Station? Alpha Station was the name given to a series of computer workstations produced by DEC from 1994 onwards and later by Compaq and HP. As the name suggests, the Alpha Stations were based on the DEC Alpha 64-bit microprocessor. Supported operating systems for Alpha Stations comprise True64 Unix, which was formerly known as Digital Unix, OpenVMS and Windows NT with Alpha BIOS Arc firmware. Most of these workstations can also run various versions of Linux and BSD operating systems. This brings us to the system tour. My particular machine is an Alpha Station 255 running at 300 megahertz. I'm going to start the tour off by going over the front panel with you. As you can see, the front panel of this machine is rather clean. On the left hand side of the panel, you've got a vent which allows airflow through to the fan which sits directly behind here, which blows directly onto the CPU heatsink. There are two lights visible on the front panel, one for hard drive, one for power, and the only switch that is visible is the reset button. I'm going to go ahead and open the flap. And underneath you see on the left hand side, you've got Blanks which are in place, which blank off the area where you would install the optional Stiffy drive. It has a SCSI CD-ROM installed, and below the CD-ROM you see the badge for the machine, which indicates that it's an Alpha Station 255 running at 300 megahertz. This brings us to the rear panel of the machine, and as you can see it looks rather generic. Starting from the left, you've got the power supply section with the kettle plug for the input power, a voltage selector which allows you to select it either for 125 volts or 230. I've got it set to 230 because my power supply locally is 220 to 230 volts at 60 hertz. The power switch for the machine and then moving to the right you've got the PS2 ports for the mouse and keyboard. You've got a parallel port, an external SCSI port, two comms ports You've got the Ethernet port and the input and output for the sound device which is on the machine. And in the top PCI slot, I've got the graphics card fitted, which has a standard VGA connector as well as an output for the optional 3D glasses. 
I'm now going to remove some of the panels of the machine to show you the insides. You remove the top cover of the machine by firstly removing the retaining screw which sits at the back. It's a single Phillips screw. Okay, and then to remove the cover itself, you pull gently on it and it just slides off. And you can lift it up and take it away. Okay, the side panel on the right hand side of the machine is easily removable. There's a little clip which holds it in place. You slide it back and you can simply pull it away. Okay, these are the only two panels that I'm going to remove because with them removed it gives you a pretty good view as to what sits inside the machine. Now for two of the machine's insides. What you can see in the center of the picture in front of you is the PCI riser card and you can clearly see that there are three PCI slots as well as two ISA slots. Although there are three PCI slots, at any given time you have the option of putting two PCI cards as well as two ISA cards into the machine at any given time. Okay, this chip over here is the sound device for the machine. It's made by Analog Devices and it's a sound port 9601. Here's the battery for the real-time clock in the machine and I happen to have changed it with a new battery. This little chip over here is the interrupt pole chip and it's quite an important chip because it contains all the pole code for the alpha chip. This port over here is the factory diagnostics port and next to it is a series of dip switches and they allow you to set up some of the options for the motherboard as well as setting the CPU clock frequency. Moving over to the CPU itself, you can see it's got quite a large heatsink fitted to it with a thermocouple on the side which allows the system to monitor CPU temperature and you've got the fan which blows directly onto the CPU heatsink. The module that the fan sits in also has little retainers you could say which allow the system to have full length PCI cards slotted. Okay. I'm going to take a look at the top of the machine and what you see here is the sled for the optional stiffy drive. Below it are the RAM banks. I happen to have 96 megabytes of EDO RAM installed in this system. At the top you see the power supply and you can clearly see that the power supply itself is rather low powered. It is rated to 115 watts. And in the drive bay itself You've got the sled which carries the SCSI CD-ROM as well as the SCSI hard drive which sits underneath. In this case of this machine, as far as I can remember, it's only a 1 gig SCSI drive which is fitted. You may be asking, how does you run? So let's fire up and find out. The first thing you'll notice about this machine is the fact that she's incredibly silent. Uh, I haven't run it in quite a while, so I actually had to make sure that she was running when I switched her on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and boot 264. And this takes us through the boot process. I'm going to let her run at normal speed for a while and from there I will then speed the video up to save you the pain of having to sit and watch the entire boot process in real time. And this gets us to the 264 log on screen. I'm going to go ahead and log on as root. And yeah, the system starts to load.
Okay, I'm just going to play around in 264 for a bit, just to give you some sort of idea as to how fluid this machine is. Okay, I'm just going to open up the system manager menu. And as far as I'm concerned, its speed is pretty similar to that of an Indy. So you're looking at this Indy type performance from this kind of machine. Okay, I'm going to go to hardware, central processing unit information. Okay, and as you can see here, the Alpha EV 4.5. 21064 processor operates at 299 megahertz and it also has an alpha internal floating point processor okay i'm just going to see what we have here in terms of apps okay i'm going to open up desktop apps it's going to open up Netscape Navigator for the sake of it. This machine isn't linked to the internet at the moment, so I'm just going to see if the browser comes up. Can you hear that hard drive churning away? Certainly not the fastest machine I've ever come across. Still going. Okay, and the Netscape Navigator comes up. It's going to see how the calculator looks. And there we go. It's quite an advanced calculator. All in all, the operating system as well doesn't look too bad. Um, certainly not as nice as Irix is, in my opinion. But yeah, there you have it. That's the Alpha Station 255. I'm going to go ahead and log off. And it's time to switch the machine off.